Today I'd like to discuss the word professional. I find that this word is very often misused, rather than it being used as a metric, as a way of gauging whether somebody is capable on a regular basis of hitting the ball out of the park and performing a service or providing a set of goods to a high standard of quality. Rather, I feel like the word professional is often used by manipulative people to attempt to make somebody feel smaller or worse about themselves so that they can then get what they want out of that person. After I have manipulated you, after I have attempted to beat you down, now I can get what it is I want out of you. And that's something that I feel is uh, is just a really lame-ass thing to do, and it's why I've never really been a fan of using the word professional, because I find that the word professional doesn't really have a static definition of most people, but rather the definition of professional is whatever I kind of feel like having it mean at the time. Uh, You know, there was this really big outrage about a year ago, and I talk about it in the Millennials and the Entitlement video that I'll annotate over here, where there's this one professor who responds to this student. This student has a, you know, pages, pages and paragraphs in an email about how they deserve to take the finals later, they deserve a day off, they deserve this, that, and the other, and the professor doesn't feel like replying to every single point in the email. He doesn't feel like creating an argument. He simply replies with the word, no. Hit send, and that's that. And he was lauded as unprofessional by the student body. He was like, there was this big outrage over how unprofessional this professor was. And it's not really about unprofessionalism. It's really kind of about the fact that he inconvenienced you and you take that inconvenience personally. And again, if you can say, well, that makes them unprofessional, well, you know, now you're kind of, you're kind of trying to like kick them, you know, below the belt and try to get them to do what it is you want. And that, again, that's really not what professionalism is all about. So... There's this one email that I received recently that I I should go over here. This is one of those that's kind of a pain in the ass because I have to, you know, go back and forth and um, edit out emails and things of that nature so people don't stalk the person that I'm talking about. So this is an email saying, what's the price to replace a Brolin, which I imagine means broken display on an A1466? And my reply over here, as can be seen, is 325 plus tax. Now, we scroll further up, and we see that this, there's a follow-up question, and then I answer the follow-up question, and it says, I already bought a new one and plan to trash this one. I am thinking about keeping it as a backup, but can you please, capital letters, please make me a better price? Now, just to give you an idea of pricing at the time of doing this, let's just go over the cost of the screen that goes into the MacBook Air at this time. So if I Google the part number, you'll see that if you want to buy it from Smart Micro, which is a company that from several reasons I really would prefer not to purchase that screen from that I could get into later, you'll see that it's about $158. If I want to buy it from this vendor, it is $255. The first few results that show up on Google at the moment are $257, $255. Two hundred fifty-five dollars. Two hundred fifty-five dollars. Two hundred bucks is a going rate for this, and the price is going up every single day. So let's just go back to this email. Now let's go over my answer to this email. My answer to the question is no. Try Craigslist and see if you can find someone without overhead expenses to do it for cheaper. Now here's the thing to understand here. There's no attitude. There's no hatred. It's just very simple. You're asking that we do something uh, that's going to take about 30 minutes of time, take liability for a $700 to $1,200 product for under $70. And that's something that, unfortunately, I'm not able to do. You have to understand that it's, I mean, I, I could just simply ignore it. I could hit delete. I could say no. Or I could say no, but you may actually find better pricing out there. There's, Believe it or not, there are people out there that will do that job for $30. And if you're looking for cheaper, I'm telling you where you could find cheaper. And this is the reply that we get. Wow, I would have seriously bought your services. Your reply is so unprofessional. I just can't believe it. This is the part that gets me. I would have seriously bought your services. Um, no, you wouldn't have, because as you say down here... But can you please make me a better price? And you'll see my response to this. Hi, you asked if I could provide a better price. My reply was no. This isn't unprofessional. It is just an answer to a yes or no question. I figured it would be helpful if I provided a manner in which a better price could be provided. There are no storefront businesses in the area that will do much of a better price, 
most hovering around 330 to 400 plus tax. However, I know that there are Craigslist businesses that will do as low as 280 as they lack the expense of Manhattan storefront expense. I wish you the best of luck in getting your air fixed. Now, again, professional to me is about, it's not really about answering no. It's not really about saying no, we don't do it at that, we can't do cheaper, but you may want to check here. This is something that I found when I've walked into several stores. I mean, I went into Models Sporting Goods the other day, and I was talking about my budget for certain things that I wanted, and the person there actually suggested that I go to Amazon. They actually said while I was in the store that Amazon will probably sell you exactly what you're looking for for 30% less money. I said what I'm looking for, I gave a price. Like, that, that's, I thought that was pretty cool. It wasn't, a, you know, like, fuck you for being an asshole. It was just simply a here. And I understand that there are different ways to reply. I understand I could have said... I'm sorry, sir. Unfortunately, we are unable to match a different price point due to these several factors of increasing part cost, incredible difficulty of, the, of separating this new type of screen, and also the fact that Manhattan is very expensive. Blah, blah, blah. And I probably would have gotten, oh, okay, thanks, and whatever. But you just, you just get to a point where you don't want to suck dick anymore. It's just, I mean, and, and, when, and when do you reach that point? I mean, when you're 20, when you're 30, when you're 40, at some point you just, you just you don't feel like giving somebody a hand job so that they don't call you unprofessional. And I feel I've reached that point several years ago. Um, and again, this is just one of those things where it's, you know, it's not really about the unprofessionalism so much as it is about me not giving you what you want. Um, you know, again, I, I, if I wanted to use that definition of unprofessional, where unprofessional or professional has nothing to do with, uh, w with your actual ability to provide service, but uh, professional just has to do with how I perceive you should act, well, I could say that, you know, in the business relationships I've had, in the, uh, in the um, negotiations that I've had with whether it's been with a school district or a company that, cre that creates a medical system and, you know, an embedded systems for medical use using laptop LCDs or, you know, let's say any of the regular clients I have for my own business. When we're talking about rates, we'll usually go back and forth with something. You know, they'll say, well, here's why we're looking for this specific price point. Is there anything you can do to match that you know call me crazy but when i think of the word professional i don't think of can you please make it cheaper i don't think of capitalized begging but again that's a matter of opinion and i would never use the word unprofessional to describe a pathetic set of begging you know Again, it's not the word to use. It's not what I would do, but it has nothing to do with being professional or not. It just has to do with it's not exactly what you liked. It's not exactly what you wanted. And again, I, I, I don't care. I mean, just in a, you know, in a, in, a, in a YouTube comment recently, somebody said, and this is a regular watcher of the channel. I have nothing against them. Seems like a nice person. You know, wouldn't you want to get one of those infrared cameras for what you do so that the service would seem more professional? And you have to understand and realize that my customer base are people who don't really see what it is I'm doing. They come in, and if they like what we quote them, and they like the attitude of the staff who was discussing everything with them, they'll leave it. They really... Again, if, if I take their board and I throw it at the wall to get the corrosion off of it, or if I fix it properly, it makes no difference to them. So the idea of spending extra money on equipment to make it seem more professional really makes no sense. When I choose to buy an infrared, uh, let's say one of those infrared temperature sensor things, that's very precise. It'll be because I feel it's what I need for my business. It'll be because I feel that I need that in order to solve a new problem that I cannot solve with my current methods. It sure as hell is not going to be because it makes me seem more professional. Because again, that has nothing to do with them. My definition of professional is somebody who regularly is able to complete their task and regularly hit it at the ball out of the park. And I do that every day without an infrared camera. So I just, it, it just doesn't, it is just utterly pointless to get one. And again, you know, Slipperman was always talking about the definition of a professional. He was always talking about what makes somebody a professional. Professionals are people who truly care about their craft. Professionals are people who come to work every day when, when they're sick. They, they, you know, they, they're able to do the same standard of work when they're sick or when they're getting a divorce or when they, you know, they, they, they're getting audited or when they're, they're, half of their employees quit or when somebody in their family dies or when they're given the wrong tools or when their tools don't work. 
That's professional. It really has absolutely nothing to do with somebody using the word professional or unprofessional to describe you simply because you haven't given them exactly what they wanted. You gave them a yellow lollipop instead of a chocolate lollipop, so now you're unprofessional. You know, again, just suck it. And the, 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 the funny thing here is I actually wound up just for the hell of it because this is one of those people that has like in their email, like, here's my Twitter and my Facebook and my startup company link and my Facebook for my startup company link and my personal website and my business website and you look at this all of these links and it's got like a really you know a hardcore picture of him where it's uh it's one of those things where you just know that they spent like 700 or at least it's like a thousand bucks on a photographer just to do a special photo shoot of them when they look really hardcore and it's talking about how this person has sold multiple multi-million dollar businesses i got in yeah, it's it's like paragraphs and paragraphs long about all their accomplishments and all the multi-million dollar things they did here's the thing like when i'm a multi-millionaire i'm not getting my secondary macbook fixed i mean I'm, I'm just buying a new one and throwing it in the trash. Or if I do decide to get it fixed and I email somebody who is about $75 less than the three local competitors, I'm probably not going to use capitalized begging to beg them for a better price because I'm a millionaire. But you're not. And it, you know, it's just one of those things with millennials that just, oh, just, just, oh, just, just, ah. Oh. It is, you know, it, there's, there's so many things that could be said that just shouldn't be said. And then I also look, and, and, I, and I understand why this person has no idea of the concept of things costing money, of a store costing more money than somebody. I, it makes total sense because when I actually go through all those things, I get to an address for the business, and the address for the business is one of those shared co-working spaces. It's one of those spaces where uh, you know you share, you get a desk, and you pay like two or three hundred dollars a month for that desk, but you share it with many other people, and that could be why this person has this very skewed definition of the word professional. Because if you have a four thousand dollar a month location, you're going to have higher overhead than somebody who's just renting a little desk, because you know their millions of dollars can't buy them a real office. Um, and, and again, when you, when you go through these things, it, it, it all just kind of starts to click and it all starts to make sense. You know, when I was starting out with, with, with a new business idea, uh, I didn't do it out of a we working space. I didn't do it out of one of those shared spaces because I felt that, you know, if you actually have a level of real professionalism that you can do it, out of, out, out of anywhere. You don't need to pretend you have an office. You don't need to spend $300 a month for a fucking desk that will do you nothing. It is a complete and utter waste of money. I was doing what I was, when I had a new startup business idea, I was doing it out of a recording studio. So you would walk in and there would be a beep, 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 front door. You would walk into this space that had a person who would watch it who very often when you walked in might be doing cocaine off of the glass table in front of you. And then several other people that probably bought it from him in the, in the back section. And here's the thing with being professional. I have to look at you and I have to conduct myself with you in such a way that you will actually ignore the surroundings or know they're there but just kind of not really care because your business is with me to get you to deal with me and to agree to give me money and agree to leave me something that costs a lot of money without, without losing your ship. Uh, you know, or if you're working out of an apartment, if you are a real professional, if you're somebody who regularly hits the ball out of the park, then you're not, you're not going to be afraid uh, as to what people are going to think of you if you have this meeting in an apartment, if you have the meeting in a coffee shop, if you have the meeting somewhere else. You know, I, I personally, again, this is a personal thing, but I feel that if you are a real honest-to-God professional, that, you know, though, though, that a lot of those we-working spaces, you know, again, I, I, don't, I don't want to rent a, a fishbowl. I don't want to rent a, a, little, a little, little glass jar for myself. And if, if, I'm, if I have a new idea, any idea worth doing, I can do better out of virtually any place other than a place where I am literally renting a desk. I have a desk in my apartment. I can go to Herald Square Park and there's, and there's a nice big table. Or if it's raining, I can go right across the street to PAX. And there's actually probably going to be less people at PAX than there are, uh, than there are going to be crammed into a lot of these WeWork spaces and things of that nature. There's a lot of places like we work that have been popping up like crazy over the last seven years of these little office suites and you get and you literally you get a desk that's like this big 
next to somebody else. That desk is like two to four hundred dollars a month. You can barely hear yourself over all the other conversations going on around you. There is a a conference room that is always filled with other people. And the whole idea here is that it looks legitimate. You seem legitimate. You seem more professional, where the entire idea is you're kind of catering to the insecurity of people who are not the proper definition of professional. But when you're the proper definition of professional, it doesn't matter. Again, like Ricky Began said, you know, the, you know why? He gets to come to work with the ripped jeans and, 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 and the, the discolored shirt and not shaven. You know why? Because he gets things done. Because he always gets the job done. That is the definition of a professional. It has nothing to do with any of the silly horse crap that other people talk about. And, you know, that, that's really my message for today. I am a professional. I, I have business, real business, that I have to do with real professionals whose actual definition of professional, again, is not did I not give them the flavor of lollipopper that they wanted, but rather was I able to actually provide what they needed. And if you can do that, then who gives two shits of a fuck what anybody has to say about you?